Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My amendment would strike Section 8 of the bill entitled Computing Resources Prioritization Report. This section requires NOAA to issue a plan for high performance computing support of its advanced research and operational weather prediction models. Included in this plan, NOAA must identify opportunities to reallocate existing computer resources to improve operational weather prediction. While this language on its face seems like it would be helpful to move towards a shared goal of improving operational weather prediction models, I believe in reality it would be detrimental to the agency and to our nation. NOAA's weather and climate computing takes place both in the Office of Oceans and Atmospheric Research, OAR, as well as the National Weather Service. <coughs> While there are not rigid lines, much of the weather and climate research computing takes place at OAR and much of the operational weather computing takes place at the National Weather Service. The provision in this bill attempts to take the resources of OAR with the functions of the National Weather Service. The result of this would be a reduction in research computing focused on climate and weather. This amendment really aims to undermine climate research computing, and I simply cannot support this. The witnesses at the June 26 subcommittee hearing were clear. All of these activities are critical for the improvement of weather and climate forecasting, and each is related. Not one of the witnesses advocated the approach that has been taken uh, in the majority bill. None, not a single one, not even the uh, witnesses called by the, by the majority. Even after holding two hearings, no witness was able to support this effort. Moreover, Acting Administrator Sullivan specifically cautioned against this approach in her testimony at the hearing. I believe that the proper path forward would be to find sufficient resources to improve all of these vital activities which save lives and are critical to the economy. <clears throat> of course, I realize that the hands of my Republican colleagues are tied in this respect as they continue to push for flat or lowered funding levels, even as we require and expect more of our science agencies a wholesome problem on this committee and the Congress. In particular, I would like to highlight that although this bill and my colleagues are on the other side of the aisle claim a desire to improve operational weather computing at NOAA, they all voted against providing NOAA with the resources to do just that in the Sandy Disaster Relief Appropriations Act of 2013. That legislation provided NOAA with funds to improve specifically operational and weather research computing. Acting Administrator Sullivan testified that these funds will allow NOAA to improve their operational computing power tenfold by 2015. So my colleagues had a chance to do something concrete to improve the same operational computing at NOAA, and yet they chose not to. I think it is a better approach uh, to recognize the resources required to accomplish these goals and to ensure these improvements, rather than prescribing organizational changes that truly serve to be a detriment in the long term while ignoring the real challenges. I urge adoption of the amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. So ordered. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to state my support for Ms. Edwards' amendment. Yes, we should increase our support for operational weather computing, but I cannot agree with increasing support for the operational weather computing by reducing weather and climate research computing resources, and that is what Section 8 of this bill attempts to do. I also want to note, as Ms. Edwards did, that this Congress just recently appropriated millions of dollars for upgrades to NOAA's operational weather computing. It was about $25 million for a supercomputer that was in the Sandy Supplemental Project so that the National Weather Service will, uh, when once uh, implemented, have the most powerful computer uh, and computing ability uh, probably in the world. Uh, Acting Administrator Sullivan testified that as a result of those appropriated dollars, NOAA's operational weather computing power would increase tenfold by 2015. So this seems like an issue that we just recently addressed. We need to be financially responsible, Mr. Chairman. And so as we move forward, although we have to have sustained support for improvements to both the operational and research computing at NOAA, the best way to do that is continue supporting NOAA when they make their budget requests. Reducing, reducing other important parts of the agency is counterproductive, and I cannot support that. Uh, for this reason, I urge adoption of the amendment, and I yield back. Thank you. The uh, charting question that we have been debating now for, oh, geez, almost half an hour uh, has a y-axis that uh, is listed as peak capacity petaflops. Is there anybody in the majority who can identify what a petaflop is? I yield. 
Um, the point is that we've been talking about a chart that simply says in visual form that we're devoting more computer resources to climate and than we are to weather. I don't think there's anything really wrong with that. Climate is a much more difficult problem to map than weather is. It's just intrinsically more complicated. Uh, it, it deals with much longer periods of time than weather does. It's like saying, well, an MRI of the brain is going to be more complicated than an MRI of the arm. That's just the way it is. And with that understanding, I think that Ms. Edwards' observations are well taken. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I had two questions for Mr. Uh, Vice, Vice Chair Bridenstein, one of which you already answered, Mr. Bridenstein, about how the chart does not reflect the Sandy supplemental funding. And my other question, if you could please uh, give us the underlying data for the chart, uh, because we would like to determine whether it considers the use of uh, other agency computers by NOAA. So we would appreciate receiving that. And, and also, just in response to some of the discussion in, in further support of Ms. Edwards' amendment, I would like to just point out that um, when Do Dr. Drogemeyer was here from Oklahoma, his written testimony says this, climate models have proven capable of reproducing environments hundreds of years in the past and thus can be useful for determining future environments and hence the types of storms that might be expected to form within them. Conversely, our understanding of an ability to predict high-impact weather will improve climate model representations of storms, precipitation, the radiation budget, and even chemical processes. We are moving toward the day when we no longer use separate models for weather and climate, and our investments likewise should reflect that trajectory. I again support Ms. Edwards' amendment and yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to comment briefly and then yield the balance of my time to uh, uh, my colleague, Ms. Edwards. Uh, it has become apparent to me that the pleas of balance um, are disingenuous, that this is really an attempt uh, to undermine uh, research uh, efforts on the Federal Government uh, on climate. Uh, climate change. Um, uh, you know, I find it absurd that uh, uh, that balance, the, the term balance, is being used uh, to justify this with with charts that uh, purport to show uh, uh, an inordinate amount of uh, resources being spent on climate. Um, the federal resources uh, we we must continue to support uh, f uh, uh, acquiring knowledge and acquire better understanding of the total systems. Uh, in order to understand uh, the more localized effects uh, that, that uh, result in weather. Um, I, I yield the balance of my time to uh, my colleague. Thank you to my colleague, Mr. Chicano. And I just want to point out to the majority that the chart that has been shown, and it is important for the public to understand this, does not reflect the $25 million at all, not even on the chart. And so, um, you know, I think you know, if we are thinking about fiscal responsibility, then it is responsible for us to acknowledge the $25 million that is actually already going uh, to the National Weather Service that uh, Acting Director Sullivan pointed out to us um, to show how they plan to raise the computing, um, the, the, the computing um, uh, capacity. Uh, I would also like to say again that I understand, because it has been clear on this subcommittee, it has been clear in our full committee that there is a deep animus to anything related to climate research on the side of the majority. But the fact is that climate impacts weather and that our experts need to have the full knowledge and expertise about this impact so that there can be better forecasting, so that it works for our fa farmers and for our industry. And I suppose you can bury your head in the sand if there is any sand left on the beach when another severe climate event happens and our weather services are not able to keep up with that for the American public. And so those are the choices that we have. But the reality is that whoever causes uh, climate, wherever it is caused, it is impacting weather and it impacts our weather forecasting. And it is important for us as policymakers to stop having this silly debate and to provide the agencies with the resources that they need to respond um, so that our communities are not further devastated by the impacts of severe weather events. And I would just close by, by saying to my colleagues, really pleading with them that for our coastal communities, for our communities in the midsection of our states that are experiencing very, very severe weather events, 
and not to have the kind of capacity that we need to save lives is very irresponsible. And I would rather see us make sure that we spend those resources appropriately, recognizing money that's already been designated, funding that's already been designated um, to provide for greater computing power and not to destroy the element uh, that is there that is going to, to help our scientists better understand the impact of climate on weather. And when another community is devastated, whether it is this year or next year or the year after, I guess I would leave it to the scientists on this committee to explain to the American public how we failed them. And with that, I yield.